Man, well, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. Let's not start it like that, dickhead. Well, when I pulled on Hi, right, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are looking at... Oh, steel... <laughs> steel hardening number two. So, I'm just trying to look at where I left off. Grain boundaries, that was it. So, in part one we looked at grain boundaries, basically, and crystal orientation and stuff like that, and how this can uh, introduce weaknesses into the actual steels and what have you. So, I mentioned briefly the iron carbon phase diagram. I'll put one up now. Um, but you only really need to start looking at that when you're looking at actual temperatures and when these temperatures come into effect and so on. So, what we want to talk about first, and we will use that diagram-ish. So, we have uh, steels, steels like so, and then we have carbon content, because carbon, carbon is what is added to iron to make steel. So, all steels are Fe plus carbon. Right, so now we've got all that sorted, that's all good. So down at the lower end of the scale, and when we look at the scale, we have zero here. So this is 0% carbon, and then over here, just for this um, example, we're going to put 6.66% carbon. Uh, like 6.67, but let's just go with 666, because it's cool. Right. <laughs> So now we have this iron carb diagram and you've got your percentages um, at the bottom here. Um, so we'll put a line in. Now this line, it gets quite complicated, it splits off, but we've got to talk about basics. So this line for all intents and purposes is 900 degrees C. Everything below this line, because uh, <laughs> you have uh, perlite and all this, but let's just say that all this is ferretic. Uh, or oh, ferrite, it's ferretic, it's ferrite. That's what we call steels that are just steels at um, low temperatures. And basically what we call these, these are kind of like your mild steels and so on, and your low carbon steels. Now, what happens is, is when you heat this up and there's this weird transition here with alphas and whatever, we will go into that. What we'll do is when you heat up your ferretic steel, um, you basically turn it into austenite. So, austenite. Austenitic. But austenite, that's what basically what you're transferring it into. And in the next video, we'll go about what this transfer is. It's all about uh, the actual arrangement of the atoms in the crystalline structure. And we'll do that in the next video. I'm just trying to, you know, wean you into this. So basically what happens is, is that when we heat up a steel, it changes. It has a, a phase transition, um, and the thing is, you've got to remember, it's still this is well, this is below its melting temperature. It hasn't melted yet; it's just glowing red hot. And what happens is, is the structure changes, and that structure um, is basically what we want. That's our hard steel. And what happens then is that we can. Um, cool it. Now if we rapidly cool it, what happens is, is it goes through this weird um, transition called martensite, martensitic, it becomes martensitic and then when we drop the temperature suddenly um, we lock it into that. So I'm trying to think, imagine you could, um, imagine you've got a cake and we've got mix here, we've got eggs, flour and water and sugar down here and imagine that if you heated up a cake mix, it turned into cake, but then if you lowered its temperature slowly, it would then separate back into its raw ingredients. That's kind of what's going on. However, if you um, get your cake mix and you heat it up to this transition to turn it into cake and then rapidly cool it, it hasn't got time to turn back into, it hasn't got time to separate and it remains excuse me, it remains cake. And that's in a sense what happens, is that when we heat up steel, um, it can absorb carbon and basically makes it a higher carbon steel, um, which pushes it along this end. But the problem is, in a way, is, let me get a different colour. In a sense, is what you can do is you can do this 
and then if you slow it if you you know return it back to ambient temperature it will come back and it will lose its carbon again it will basically diffuse out of it it'll leach out now what you can do is if you do this and it increases its carb level and then rapidly cool it you can in a sense keep it uh, you can retain the carbon that's in it now how that exactly works we'll do that in the next video that's all about um, crystal um, atomic structure and um, you know face center cubic and body center cubic and all this how it actually traps that carbon in there and what other problems that can actually cause but you might hear these things called you know uh, ferritic and martensitic and austenetic and all this and basically that's what they are they are um, physical things that happen with inside the steel based on the temperature and whatever so in a sense what happens is, is when you drag it over here you're in a nearly in a sense it's not on the diagram like that now martensitic really it doesn't belong on this diagram because it's not an equilibrium it's not um it's not always predictable and depends what you also add into the alloys as well but um yeah if you go too far with your carbon you get iron carbide um, so basically we're fucking around in this area and when you actually look at it we really are just fucking around in this area it's really low down the difference between high carbon and low carbon steel uh, and, and you always the other problem with all this as well is that you always get mixes so your steel it doesn't matter what you do you will always still have some ferrite you'll still have um, some martensite in there you'll have some perlite in there you'll have some um, you know uh, uh, iron carbide in there it's always there's always this random mix of all whatever it's just trying to make you know the me the metallurgy of all this is trying to get steels to have more of what you want and less of what you don't but you can never get it perfect there's always inclusions there's always shit in there it always oxidizes and it's always a mess but what i'm going to try and do is unravel that mess because it always is a mess i cannot make it black and white ever it always is this yeah, weird little mess and it depends what your steel's having and different uh, elements that you add to your steel your alloy mix do affect this and how this operates crystal growth and blah 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 then you start getting to Gibbs free energy and diffusion and try and work oh, and it just goes all mental but I'm just trying to break it down so you get a good idea that um, just by changing the arrangement of the atoms um, will actually change uh, its behaviour, but also what it's called in a sense. These diagrams, this is the, you know, there's a top and a bottom and a left and a right. These things get mental. You know, there's a cut off here, there's a cut off here. It does this and then there's this and it just, yeah, and I'm not going to do that because you don't need to know that. But I will show you, um, we'll do some physical demonstrations of actually doing all this. We'll also do some demonstrations of... Um, of testing if we heat it up to this and then actually test it how malleable or how hard how brittle um, are those steels and whatever and actually showing you that there are some steels that you can harden there are some steels that you can you have to use different hardening processes like case hardening uh, nitriding and there's loads of other ways you can get around this and we will go through them and I will give you demonstrations of them all in the future hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit